welcome to the 11 o'clock news from Bahrain TV. In line with His Majesty the King's directives, the BDF Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa visited the Bahrain Royal Navy as the naval vessel Furqata set sail this morning to participate in Operation Restore Hope alongside the Saudi-led Arab coalition in Yemen. The BDF Commander-in-Chief was received by the BDF Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagar Al Naimi, Bahrain Royal Navy Forces Commander, Commander Sheikh Khalifa bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, and BDF senior officers. Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed delivered a speech on the occasion, conveying the greetings and appreciation of His Majesty the King and his wishes for the success of the mission to protect legitimacy in Yemen. He also praised the role of the BDF and their heroism in serving the kingdom. Under the patronage of the Commander of the Royal Guard, His Highness Brigadier Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, a ceremony was held today marking the departure of the BDF Royal Guard's Duty Force 2 to take part in Operation Restore Hope in Yemen as part of the Saudi-led Arab Coalition Forces. Present were the Commander of the Special Royal Forces, His Highness Major Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and several officers. Marking the departure, His Highness Sheikh Nasser conveyed the greetings and appreciation of His Majesty the King. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and BDF Commander-in-Chief and their wishes of success. He said the BDF was honored to take part in such operations to reinforce the defense of legitimacy in Yemen. He commended the high morale of the BDF officers and affiliates and their pride in performing their duties in Yemen. His Highness Sheikh Nasser expressed thanks and appreciation to all BDF members for their dedication and praised their noble sacrifices while performing their national duty.
On behalf of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the son of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman Al Khalifa, last night visited the Bahatia Gargiria, Kawalram, Haridas, Kavalani and Thakur families to mark the religious festival of Diwali underlining Bahrain's commitment to cultural and religious diversity. During the visits, His Highness extended His Royal Highness the Crown Prince's greetings to the families and expressed His Royal Highness's appreciation for their significant contribution to the kingdom's commercial and economic sectors. Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman expressed his pride in Bahrain's long-established multicultural and diverse society, which continues to foster religious and cultural understanding. His Highness noted that protecting religious rights and freedom and promoting the principles of tolerance and coexistence have always been a part of Bahraini society and are supported by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Highness also emphasized the important role Islam plays in promoting tolerance between all religions and cultures. He wished all Bahraini citizens and residents peace and prosperity under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad. For their part, the family celebrating Diwali thanked His Highness Sheikh Mohammed for his visit and expressed appreciation for the continued support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. The families also welcomed the kingdom's cultural openness and long-standing support for religious freedoms.
Speaker of the Shura Council, Ali Al Saleh, inaugurated today a new administrative building of the Shura General Secretariat, which was built in cooperation between the Shura Council and the Ministry of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning. The Speaker of the Shura Council hailed Bahrain's leadership's remarkable support to the Legislative Authority, which would contribute in encouraging Shura members to exert more efforts for the best of the country and its citizens. The Minister of Energy, Dr. Abdul Hussein Mirza, led the Bahrain's delegation to the 6th Asian Ministerial Energy Roundtable, which was held in Doha, Qatar. The forum discussed several issues under the theme of the role of Asia in the scene of new energy, which has been organized by the Qatari Ministry of Energy and Industry in cooperation with the International Energy Forum. Dr. Mirza delivered a speech on the latest issues of using and preserving energy as well as the use of renewable energy. He highlighted the United Nations goals for sustainable development, pointing out the agreement that Bahrain has signed with the UN Development Program to establish a or a unit for sustainable development to better rationalize the use of energy. Minister of Transportation and Telecommunication Kamal bin Ahmed said that marketing of the exhibition stands for Bahrain's fourth international air show 2016 has been completed. He said the spaces are 100% booked for the show that is set to take place between the 21st and 23rd of January 2016 at Sakhir Air Base. The minister held several meetings with international companies on the sidelines of the Dubai Air Show, which closed today to discuss cooperation and reinforced participation in Bahrain's air show, which resulted in several agreements being signed with a number of companies. In line with the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and under the auspices of the President of Royal Charity Organization, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, Bahrain opened the Bahrain Egyptian School in the village of Abu Ura in Sharqiya Governorate. The school was built in cooperation between Bahrain's RCO and the Egyptian charity organization Misr Al Khair as part of an agreement to build 100 schools in deprived areas and villages. Bahrain's ambassador to Egypt. Ahmed Darab, the RCO's Secretary General Dr. Mustafa Sayyid, the Governor of Sharqiya Dr. Rida Abdesalam, the Chairman of Mr. Al Khair's Education Sector Dr. Nashwa Ayyub, and the Egyptian Education Undersecretary Mohammed Hussam al Din all participated in the opening. Cholera claims lives of over 100,000 people every year. A recent outbreak in Iraq has spread to neighboring countries, including eight cases in Bahrain. Mohammed al-Shaban reports on the government's precautionary measures. Cholera has been receiving a lot of attention in the media in the past few weeks. This acute intestinal infection, which mainly affects populations in developing countries, claims the lives of 100 to 120,000 each year, while infections reach 5 million, according to the World Health Organization. The source of this bacterial disease is mainly other cholera patients, when their feces contaminate waterways and drinking water supplies. So cholera is an infectious disease. The main symptoms uh, of cholera um, are diarrhea, sometimes with, sometimes without vomiting. Usually the diarrhea is watery diarrhea. Um, the patient gets the infection through eating uh, contaminated food or drinking contaminated water. Um, now, most of the patients, around 80% 80 80 of the patient, uh, develop uh, mild to moderate disease or mild to moderate symptoms. Only 20% get the severe form of the disease. A recent cholera outbreak in Iraq has put a number of neighboring countries, including the GCC, on alert. The disease can lead to death by dehydration and kidney failure within hours if left untreated. It was detected west of Baghdad in September and has since infected around 2,200 people in Iraq alone, killing six. Bahrain has so far documented eight cases, but officials say it is hard for the disease to spread in the kingdom due to the advanced sewage system. Now in Bahrain, um, we had only eight cases of cholera up till now, and we expect few cases to appear among pay, uh, travelers returning back from Iraq. However, the risk of widely spread disease is very low. Uh, because in Bahrain we have an adequate supply of safe water, we have an excellent sewage disposal system, uh, as well as having um, high community awareness and adherence to personal hygiene measures.
Many Bahrainis are due to head to Iraq next month to observe religious processions. Officials are encouraging citizens to take precautionary measures and only use clean bottled water while observing personal hygiene, particularly before eating. Here at the Public Health Directorate, the message is very clear. Although the travelers might bring in the cholera bacteria, the chances of it manifesting and spreading thanks to the advanced infrastructure are very minimal. The Ministry of Health is ready to tackle the situation. Hamid Shaban, Bahrain Television News.